Hello, this is White Wolf, Ways the Wild Institute here in Vermont. And it's the uh, last week of April. Just got through making a few edibles videos and beautiful sunshine, bare dry ground and short sleeves. But here in the mountains, storms like this in the, all the way through May can creep up on you out of the blue overnight. Wake up in the morning and you got snow on the ground. From the looks of it, I'd say this storm could easily last for two days. Just crawled out of my half earth shelter, which I uh, built last fall and uh, made a video on. If you haven't watched it yet. But even though it's <clears throat> snowing out, it's still spring and there's plants underneath this snow. I still have to eat. And so today we're going to move on with our edible series and we're going to uh, move into the next edible plant that we'll discuss here shortly. Now, what I have here, buried under the snow, is a little plant called Orpin. It's also known as Live Forever. Let's go see if we can uncover one. All right, I uncovered some of these uh, Orpin. It's spelled O-R-P-I-N-E, or Live Forever, from the snow here. And let's see if we can hone in. Now, now the Orpin here, it grows from uh, southern Canada, clear on down into uh, uh, Maryland. You can even find it out through Ohio. Um, okay. Now, actually, all of the uh, edible plants that I've been doing so far, um, the trout lily, for example, that grows again from uh, uh, South Canada and Minnesota, um, clear on down into uh, Virginia. Uh, you can even find it down as far as uh, the mountains of uh, Georgia. Uh, the wild leek, um, again, uh, Nova Scotia, Minnesota, all the way down in through uh, uh, Missouri, uh, Virginia, um, Tennessee. Um, what else did I do so far? Ah, the ostrich fern, uh, Nova Scotia and Southern Canada. Uh, you can find that down into, um, uh, uh, you can find it as far south as Southern Virginia, um, all the way out into uh, Missouri. Um, you know, you can even find uh, uh, leeks all the way down in through uh, Oklahoma. So this, this stuff is pretty widespread. But the orp in here, let's see. As you can see the, uh, the leaves, are very rubbery, okay? It's kind of a succulent. Let's see if the camera's gonna go in focus here. Let's see if I can switch this. Hmm. All right, let's try this. I'm not very good with technology here, so I think that's about as close as I can get today. Anyway, the leaves are uh, very smooth, rubbery, there's no hairs whatsoever on them. There's very few markings on them as well, except for a light serration on the edge of the leaf, which you can see there. And they grow in whorls around a stem, a very rubbery, flexible stem. Where'd it go? Move these leaves out of the way. See, you can see there, the stem is pale in color, kind of a grayish green. Got leaves growing all the way down in to the ground and all the way up. And it's a very rubbery plant. Now this plant here can grow uh, 12 inches all the way up to 30 inches tall. And the leaves will grow larger and larger. And in the um, summertime, you can end up getting leaves that are about two and a half inches across. As you can see, these are still very small. And this grows down into the soil not too deep into a, uh, a cluster of um, um, white kind of tuberous roots and uh, one plant contains many of them and this spreads very easily if you dig those roots up and take a few and then rebury them they'll grow next year and this can cover vast areas of the forest land it likes uh, younger forests uh, you won't find this too much in, uh, in old growth uh, well established forests but the nice thing about this is it's edible right off the plant. The leaves, um, the stem is also edible right off the plant. Uh, very mild in flavor, very watery. And also, you can steam them. All right, you're going to deplete the uh, vitamin content if you uh, steam them or boil them. 
you know, especially since you don't have to. They're edible raw. Uh, but you can. And they're loaded with vitamin C, and they also have vitamin A, which most green plants in the wild contain. And the roots, you don't want to eat raw. The roots, you have to uh, boil a little bit. Uh, they're a white root, and let's see if I can dig some of those up here. Uh, I'm going to give my thanks to this plant, and I'm going to harvest the roots, but I will also be eating the stem, the leaves, and the roots, and I will rebury some of them. So let me dig a few of those up so I can show you what they look like. Well, it turns out I didn't have to dig them up anyway. The leaf cover here was so thick that the roots were not even in the ground. They're growing throughout the leaf cover. So as you can see, the plant here, follow it down, and there are the roots. See, they look like kind of long potatoes. Now when you peel those, there it goes, getting blurry again. When you peel those, uh, they end up uh, turning uh, pure white inside the flesh. They're very starchy. Um, but when you cook them, uh, they're, they're really delicious, uh, kind of sweet. Um, almost like a hyacinth bulb, but um, like I said, they come in great clusters and you can take some and leave some. And this usually grows in vast amounts across the forest floor, so it's no problem finding roots for your tubers uh, for boiling and also um, your, uh, your greens for salads as well and stems. Now these, uh, they do flower, um, let's see, usually between late June and mid-September they will uh, get five petaled uh, swirl flowers um, that are pink. Uh, sometimes they can be pale um, pale pink, sometimes dark pink and almost uh, almost a reddish color. So there you have it for Orpen or Live Forever. Now uh, filming out here uh, in a uh, in a snowstorm with uh, this camera is not the easiest thing. Um, so I'm sure this uh, quality video is not quite as good as my other ones, but uh, maybe I'll get another video of uh, Orpen when uh, it stops snowing and, and this melts, so you can see it a little bit better. Maybe even later in the um, the season when it has flowers on, I'll make another video. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this one. I'm White Wolf here at Ways of the Wild Institute in snowy Vermont at the very end of April. Spring will come back soon. Wula Mollison. Be well and happy.